triggers are probably the most scrutinized part of any firearm. How's the break? The reset? How many pounds does it take to pull? Two stage or single stage? Can a good trigger really make you a better shooter? Are there compatibility concerns or can I use any old AR-15 trigger? By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what trigger you should use in your AR-9. So let's get into the basics of triggers in episode eight of our ultimate AR-9 build guide. First of all, we need to clear up a common misconception. PCCs are not just ARs. While PCCs in the AR platform are really popular, they're not the only option. PCCs or pistol caliber carbines encompass a wide range of firearms chambered in pistol calibers. So what we're covering here are triggers that are designed for the AR platform, specifically for AR9s. All right, let's start out by breaking down the key elements you need to consider when choosing the right trigger for your AR9. If you want a deep dive on AR-15 triggers and how they work and all the components, then we got a great video for you right here or linked down below. But let's do a quick crash course on triggers here to understand what elements to look for when shopping for a trigger. The first element and probably the most common way triggers are shopped is pull weight. This is the amount of force required to press the trigger and have it break or release the hammer. There's a wide range of pull weights out there, the most common being around three to four pounds, and some triggers offer adjustable options so you can dial in the weight that suits your preferences and shooting style. Like the Ballistic Engineering Accurized Adjustable Trigger, just as an example. So why does pull weight even matter? A heavier pull weight can help you be more deliberate with your shots, but the downside of heavy trigger is it does take more force to fire the weapon increasing the chance of something moving as you try to pull the trigger. While a lighter pull weight can help improve accuracy, they do require more discipline when it comes to firearm safety. But all honesty, it's about finding the sweet spot that suits your style, so don't be afraid to experiment and find the perfect weight that works for your application. Take up, also known as pre-travel, is the movement of the trigger before you enter the creep phase. It's that slight bit of travel where you feel the trigger starting to move, but no mechanical function is actually taking place. A shorter take up can help contribute to quicker follow up shots and control. Creep on the other hand is referring to the distance where the hammer and sear are interfacing with each other and moving towards the wall or the break point. This is the spot where triggers that are manufactured well with polished surfaces and good hammer and sear interface geometry will feel very nice. And more budget trigger options may feel gritty or kind of mushy. The break, commonly called the wall or hitting the wall, is the point where the sear of the trigger releases the hammer. A clean break is ideal, meaning the trigger releases without any hesitation. This is the part where the edge of the sear and the hammer are at its final point before the hammer falls. Some triggers will have a crisp and clean break, while others may not give the feeling of a wall at all. A good example of this is the stock trigger on a Glock. After the break, we have over travel. Over travel in triggers refers to the distance that the trigger moves after it breaks until it reaches the end of its travel. Basically, when you pull the trigger, the movement past the break point should be as short as possible, which can help pr provide faster follow-up shots and consistent pull because your finger simply isn't moving far after the break. Finally, the reset is when your gun fires and you relax your finger off the trigger. The trigger will disconnect from the disconnector and then reset the hammer and sear ready to fire your next shot. A shorter reset is going to help with those faster follow-up shots since the shorter reset enables the trigger to be ready to fire quicker, which is important if getting shots downrange is your top priority. Now that we know the basics of trigger terminology, let's take a second and talk about the unique considerations when it comes to 9mm triggers. As it relates to 9mm AR triggers, there have been some problems found. The first problem is most triggers were not designed for the heavier force of the 9mm direct blowback system in mind, which means some parts like the springs could possibly wear out faster and lead to possible malfunctions over time. The second problem is that since the firing pin in the bolt typically has a spring integrated into it, the hammer needs to hit the firing pin with more force compared to your typical AR-15 firing pin to prevent light primer strikes. This means the spring pressure needs to be around three pounds at a minimum. 
To combat these issues, you're going to want to get a three pound or greater pull weight trigger or a trigger that is designed for nine millimeter because the heavier tension created by the trigger helps slow down the bolt, reducing the overall wear on the trigger and helps with recoil. Triggers that have a pull weight under three pounds use lighter springs and therefore are more likely to lead to light primer strikes when the hammer doesn't hit the firing pin with enough force. Getting a trigger that is designed for nine millimeter or getting a mil spec style trigger with heavier springs can help mitigate these issues. If you end up going with a mil spec style trigger, replacement springs are not expensive and you can change your trigger pull by swapping some springs out. Just find a happy balance between reliability and pull weight. But when shopping around for AR9 triggers, I've noticed a lot of companies just labeling their standard triggers as PCC triggers for shopability reasons and not actually changing the design of their trigger. In reality, if you get a modern ramped bolt, like what we talked about in the bolt episode, it shouldn't matter too much what AR style triggers you go with as long as it's not too light of a pull weight. So now that we have a good understanding of the unique considerations with PCC triggers, we can move on to picking out a trigger that fulfills all of these requirements. We're going to do that in just a minute, but before we do, we should discuss the two big decisions you're going to have to make with any trigger, and that is drop-in versus mil-spec style triggers and two-stage versus single-stage triggers. First up is two-stage versus single-stage, and the proper way to think about the feeling of a single-stage versus a two-stage trigger is by thinking about a carrot and an icicle. When you break an icicle, the break is going to be really sudden and snappy. When you break a carrot, on the other hand, there is going to be a bit of stretch and give before it snaps. Think of the single-stage trigger as the icicle. A single stage trigger is the simpler of the two. It has a constant pull weight throughout the entire trigger take up. Once you apply enough pressure, the trigger breaks and releases the hammer. Two stage triggers on the other hand have a distinct break point. The first stage is a lighter pull that allows you to take up the slack in the trigger. Once you reach the second stage, you'll feel a noticeable increase in resistance, usually called again, the wall, followed by a clean break. For PCCs, you probably want to go single stage for most rain use, unless you plan on using this as a self-defense gun. To be honest, your best bet is to pick a trigger and learn how it functions and become proficient with that before going too deep into the weeds with single or two stage. But let's move on to the last decision before we go through some trigger options for ourselves. So let me ask, are you really good at installing parts and do you like a challenge? Or do you want something that is quick and easy to install? That's probably the biggest benefit to drop-in style triggers. One of the biggest decisions you're going to have to make is do you want a drop-in, also known as a cassette style trigger, or do you want a mil-spec style trigger? Some of the benefits of mil-spec triggers are they can be anywhere from 35 bucks to over 200 bucks, making them very accessible for the vast majority of shooters. One of my favorite triggers is our AT3 two-stage 4.5 pound trigger kit, or if you prefer a single stage option, our enhanced nickel Teflon trigger will work great for many AR builders if you're just starting out. If you want the easiest install and use a trigger that is more set and forget it, you will probably want to grab yourself a drop-in trigger system. Cassette or drop-in triggers are designed for easy installation and come in a single unit that replaces the mil spec trigger. They're going to be installed as a single unit, which means all you need to do is drop them in, throw in your trigger pins, and that's it. Being that they are pre-assembled, the trigger pull weight, creep, reset, and everything else is preset to make it the best that it can be. Since the manufacturers of these triggers put a ton of advanced engineering and manufacturing, they often come in a higher price tag compared to traditional mil spec style triggers. If you want to get into one of these triggers that are meant specifically for PCCs, there are some options out there like the Rise Armament Rave PCC trigger, which runs dependably by hitting a spring-loaded firing pin on the bolt with enough force to make sure that your PCC fires reliably every time. The Rave is a popular trigger due to its no-way take-up design to ensure almost no take-up before the crisp 3.5 pound break and fits into most budgets while being designed specifically for 9mm blowback systems. It's a single stage and comes in either flat or bow style triggers and I also prefer the easy drop-in installation and the included anti-walk pins is a nice touch. 
One of the most common questions that we get around here is, does this specific trigger work with my specific gun? Well, it's hard to say. You're probably going to be pretty safe getting a trigger that says it's compatible with AR9s, or for that case, you really are set with any AR-15 trigger kit, but something to consider with any trigger that you're shopping for is always check the compatibility with your gun before you go dropping the dollars. For example, the Timney PCC AR-9 single stage trigger is not compatible with the popular Air Precision EPC-9, so keep your eyes open when shopping, always do your homework, and always look at the fine print of any product page you're shopping through. So we've talked a lot about triggers, but what are we going with in ours? For our build, since I want this gun to primarily be a self-defense backpack or truck gun, in those situations, I want to be intentional with all my shots. So with that in mind, I'm going to go with the Geisley G2S Combat Trigger. This trigger was designed for law enforcement use, close quarters, and mid-range carbine work because it has a two-stage trigger with a first stage pull weight of around 2.5 to 4.5 pounds and a second stage of 2 pounds, meaning your shots are deliberate and precise. So is this the trigger that is going to make you a better shooter guaranteed? I would argue it's not this trigger. It's not a single stage or a two stage. It's not a mil spec or a drop in, and it's not even an adjustable one or ones that the big gun tubers use. The trigger that makes you a better shooter is the one that lets you spend money on ammo so you can go out and train and get better with any trigger that you can afford, whether it's a $35 trigger or a $350 trigger system. Look, I know it's a cliche, but there is no magic trigger that will make you better. The only thing that will make you better is dry fire and getting some real trigger time at the range. So don't go spending money on a fancy trigger at first. Get a quality trigger and spend the rest of your money on ammo to train. After spending a little bit of time shooting guns, you will develop a taste and an opinion for what you like to feel in a trigger. Then you can upgrade later. So get out there and shoot. Now we've got the trigger all figured out, it's time to pick out some lower parts to throw into our angst at lower. If you want to win something like this angst at receiver set, then go to our link in the description or website at at3tactical.com to enter a giveaway and thanks to Angstat for teaming up with us so we can do quality giveaways like this. And if you want to know what lower parts we're throwing into this as well as the stock or brace or even the pistol grip that we're going to go with, you can go ahead and check out this video right here.